That doesn't mean that there aren't going to still be folks who need more help. And that we're not going to have some constraints statutorily, and Congress isn't going to have to step up. But it does mean that the basic backbone, the basic infrastructure and architecture, that we have in terms of disaster response I think has been high quality. And I'm very proud of them for that. And I want to publicly acknowledge that at the moment. Thank you, guys. Barack Obama Eulogy for Bo Biden 3 Delivered June 6, 2015, ST Anthony of Padua Church, Wilmington, Delaware A man, wrote an Irish poet, is original when he speaks the truth that has always been known to all good men. Bo Biden was an original. He was a good man. A man of character. A man who loved deeply. and was loved in return. Your Eminences, Your Excellencies, General Odierno, Distinguished Guests, to Halley, Natalie, and Hunter. To Hunter, Kathleen, Ashley, Howard, the rest of Bo's beautiful family, friends, colleagues. To Jill and to Joe we are here to grieve with you, but more importantly, we are here because we love you. Without love, life can be cold and it can be cruel. Sometimes cruelty is deliberate the action of bullies or bigots. Or the inaction of those indifferent to another's pain. But often, cruelty is simply born of life.
a matter of fate or God's will, beyond our mortal powers to comprehend. To suffer such faceless, seemingly random cruelty can harden the softest hearts. Or shrink the sturdiest. It can make one mean, or bitter, or full of self pity. Or, to paraphrase an old proverb, it can make you beg for a lighter burden. But if you're strong enough, it can also make you ask God for broader shoulders. Shoulders broad enough to bear not only your own burdens, but the burdens of others. Shoulders broad enough to shield those who need shelter the most. To know Bo Biden is to know which choice he made in his life. To know Joe and the rest of the Biden family is to understand why Bo lived the life he did. For Bo. A cruel twist of fate came early the car accident that took his mom and his sister. And confined Bo and Hunter, then still toddlers, to hospital beds at Christmas time. But Bo was a Biden. And he learned early the Biden family rule, if you have to ask for help, it's too late. It meant you were never alone, you don't even have to ask. Because someone is always there for you when you need them. And so, after the accident, Aunt Valerie rushed in to care for the boys, and remained to help raise them. Joe continued public service, but shunned the parlor games of Washington, choosing instead the daily commute home. Maintained for decades, that would let him meet his most cherished duty to see his kids off to school. To kiss them at night, to let them know that the world was stable and that there was firm ground under their feet.
as Joe himself confessed to me, he did not just do this because the kids needed him. He did it because he needed those kids. And somehow, Bo sensed that how understandably and deeply hurt his family and his father was. And so, rather than use his childhood trauma as justification for a life of self-pity or self-centeredness. That very young boy made a very grown-up decision. He would live a life of meaning. He would live a life for others. He would ask God for broader shoulders. Bo would guide and look out for his younger brother. He would embrace his new mom apparently, the two boys sheepishly asking their father when. They could all marry Jill and throughout his life, no one would make Jill laugh harder. He would look after their baby sister, Ashley. He would forever be the one to do the right thing. Careful not to give his family or his friends cause for concern. It's no secret that a lot of what made Bo the way he was was just how much he loved and admired his dad. He studied law, like his dad, even choosing the same law school. He chased public service, like his dad, believing it to be a noble and important pursuit. From his dad, he learned how to get back up when life knocked him down. He learned that he was no higher than anybody else. And no lower than anybody else something Joe got from his mom, by the way. And he learned how to make everybody else feel like we matter, because his dad taught him that everybody matters. He even looked and sounded like Joe, although I think Joe would be first to acknowledge that Bo.
was an upgrade Joe 2.0. But as much as Bo reminded folks of Joe, he was very much his own man. He was an original. Here was a scion of an incredible family who brushed away the possibility of privilege for the harder. Better reward of earning his own way. Here was a soldier who dodged glory, and exuded true humility. A prosecutor who defended the defenseless. The rare politician who collected more fans than foes. and the rarer public figure who prioritized his private life above all else. Bo didn't cut corners. He turned down an appointment to be Delaware's attorney general so he could win it fair and square. when the field was clear for him to run for the Senate. He chose to finish his job as AG instead. He didn't do these things to gain favor with the cynical public it's just who he was. In his twenties, he and a friend were stopped for speeding outside Scranton. And the officer recognized the name on the license, and because he was a fan of Joe's work with law enforcement. He wanted to let Bo off with a warning. But Bo made him write that ticket. Bo didn't trade on his name. After September 11th, he joined the National Guard. He felt it was his. Obligation part of what those broader shoulders are for. He did his duty to his country and deployed to Iraq. And General Odierno eloquently spoke to Major Biden's service. What I can tell you is when he was loading up to ship out at Dover. There was a lot of press that wanted to interview him. Bo refused. 
he was just another soldier. I saw him when I visited Iraq, he conducted himself the same way. His deployment was hard on Halley and the kids. Like it was for so many families over the last 14 years. It was hard on Joe. Hard on Jill. That's partly why Jill threw herself into her work with military families with so much intensity. That's how you know when Joe thunders may God protect our troops in every speech he does. He means it so deeply. Like his father, Bo did not have a mean bone in his body. The cruelty he'd endured in his life didn't make him hard. It made him compassionate, empathetic. But it did make him abhor bullies. Bo's grandfather, Joe's father. Believed that the most egregious sin was to abuse your power to inflict pain on another. So Bo squared his broad shoulders to protect people from that kind of abuse. He fought for homeowners who were cheated, seniors who were scammed. He even went after bullying itself. He said. Up a child protector predator task force, convicted more than 200 of those who targeted vulnerable children. And in all this, he did it in a way that was alive to the suffering of others. bringing in experts to help spare both the children and their parents further trauma. That's who Bo was. Someone who cared. Someone who charmed you, and disarmed you, and put you at ease. when he'd have to attend a fancy fundraiser with people who took themselves way too seriously.
he'd walk over to you and whisper something wildly inappropriate in your ear. The son of a senator, a major in the army, the most popular elected official in Delaware I'm sorry. Joe but he was not above dancing in nothing but a sombrero. And shorts at Thanksgiving if it would shake loose a laugh from the people he loved. And through it all, he was the consummate public servant, a notebook in his back pocket at all times. So he could write down the problems of everyone he met and go back to the office to get them fixed. Because he was a Biden, the titles that come with family husband, father. Son, brother, uncle those were the ones Bo valued above any other. This was a man who, at the Democratic National Convention, didn't spend all his time in back rooms with donors or glad handing. Instead, he rode the escalators in the arena with his son, up and down, up and down. Again and again, knowing, just like Joe had learned, what ultimately mattered in life. You know, anyone can make a name for themselves in this reality TV age, especially in today's politics. If you're loud enough or controversial enough, you can get some attention. But to make that name mean something, to have it associated with dignity and integrity that is rare. There's no shortcut to get it. It's not something. You can buy. But if you do right by your children, maybe you can pass it on. And what greater inheritance is there? What greater inheritance than to be part of a family that passes on the values of what it means to be a great parent?
that passes on the values of what it means to be a true citizen. That passes on the values of what it means to give back, fully and freely, without expecting anything in return?